supporting and just give a, a one more brief overview. Um, the purpose of this community listening session is to get feedback from community members. Um, the presentation will be led by the uh, consultant team, the architectural resources group. Thank you. Thank you, Jasmine. Um, so I'll give a quick introduction. Um, uh, as I said, I am an architectural historian and preservation planner at ARG. Um, we are a architecture and historic preservation firm with over 40 years experience in the field. We work throughout the West Coast and we have offices in LA, San Francisco, and Portland. Um, also on the project team and with me tonight is Katie Horak, principal in charge of the project and senior associate, Andrew Goodrich. We have extensive experience working with and in the city of West Hollywood and are very familiar with the city and its history. Um, and we are all, as I said, um, here tonight to answer questions at the end of the session. Next slide, please, Jasmine. Oh, sorry, I, next slide, there's our project team. So I will start by discussing the purpose of the project just a little bit. Um, the historical context study will examine the history of discrimination in West Hollywood. It will document racially and culturally discriminatory policies that have affected the BIPOC and LGBTQ plus communities in West Hollywood from 19th century to the present. The project will examine how these policies have shaped the current demographic, economic, and physical, physical landscape of the city. And it will also trace the demographics of the area that is now West Hollywood and give an overview of West Hollywood's BIPOC communities. Next slide, please. The document is part of a multi-pronged approach to address issues of equality in West Hollywood and ensure it is an equitable and welcoming place to live and work. The study's findings will inform the city's next steps to address racial, cultural, and social equity in West Hollywood. The project is being completed in tandem with work by the Social Justice Task Force, which was created to advise on social and racial equity issues and to provide recommendations to city council on ways to address racism in the city. Next slide. Oh, um, and Jasmine, if you go back one real quick, and um, we'll, we can pause for the um, first poll question. Let's get that up. Okay. You're muted, Jasmine. Yeah, I believe I just had to stop sharing to do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> One second. Why don't we save that portion? For some reason, it's not coming up. We'll save that until sure. the end. Sure, yeah, that's completely fine. All right, so I will continue with a quick overview of the project. Next slide, please. So the major components of the project include research, the completion of the study itself, and community input. The project kicked off in the spring. Currently, we are conducting primary and secondary source research. We also want community input to inform the document. We have created a, a comment form, excuse me, as a way to provide that input, which we will talk a little bit more about in a little bit. Next slide, please. The document will cover policies that affected West Hollywood's BIPOC and LGBTQ plus communities, such as federal, state, and local laws and zoning policies, discriminatory policies and actions in the real estate industry, and private sector discrimination in businesses, restaurants, and bars. We will be uh -huh. looking at both overtly discriminatory policies and those that were not as obvious. Um, an example of the overtly discriminatory policies that we are looking at would be the use of restrictive covenants, which were tied to property deeds and prevented people from, of color from purchasing or living in properties covered, covered by these covenants. 
The study will also look at policies that were not overtly discriminatory, but would have been so in practice and application. Um, examples include laws governing liquor distribution and so-called lewd conduct, which were used as justification for raiding bars and nightclubs that were gathering places for the LGBTQ plus community. So West Hollywood's location in unincorporated counties made these raids less common than they were in the city of LA, for example, they did happen. And whenever possible, we will discuss intersectionality and the ways in which discrimination has been experienced differently by different groups of people. We will also be looking at the ways in which discriminatory policies have been reversed or counteracted. Examples of this include fair housing legislation, grassroots mobilizing, and the 1948 Supreme Court case, Shelley versus Kramer, that made restrictive covenants unconstitutional, uh, just to name a few. The study will also document the efforts made by West Hollywood since cityhood to ensure equality and fair treatment. And last but not least, that the study will look at the demographics of West Hollywood and changes over time to the extent possible. We will discuss the ways these trends have affected West Hollywood and what it is today. Next slide, please. As I said before, the project kicked off in the spring. Um, we are currently in the research and community outreach phase of our scope. The study is slated to be completed in November and we will present our findings in December. We are asking that comments be submitted from now until October 1st so that we have time to incorporate them into the document. We are relying on community input to help us round out the study. We want to get feedback on how discrimination has affected you or someone you know working or living in West Hollywood, either in the past or in the present. Um, this may have taken the form of general experiences or specific instances. The document will incorporate our research as well as these individual experiences and examples whenever possible. Um, and when we use experiences shared with us through community outreach, no information will be included that could give anyone's identity away. We want to respect your privacy. Only basic information relevant to the experience, such as race or ethnicity or gender or gender identity, will be included. Um, when submitting information on the public comment form, you do not have to include your name or anything else you do not wish to. All of the questions are optional. Next slide, please. Um, and so now we would like to open it up for questions. So there were a few um, folks who contacted me. Um, so I'm going to pull that list up and that's what we can go off of first. And then we'll allow folks to uh, use the raise your hand feature. Um, so I have Eugene Maskey. Eugene, if you're here, I will invite you to speak. I don't see, oh, I see you here. So if you want, um, you can feel free to turn your camera on while you speak. You should have that capability. Hi, Eugene. Oh, you're muted. So sorry, two and a half years of this and I still get forget that I shouldn't get yeah, sorry. Um, and also I jumped from another meeting, so my background shouldn't be this, it should be something else, but I'm sorry. It's my day job. I work for CES. Anyways, um so um so today I was kind of like um trying to say a couple of words about the Russian speaking community. My name is Eugene May Sky. I'm a member of the Russian Speaking Advisory Board. And uh, Russian Advisory Board is actually um, advises this uh, city council of West Hollywood on the policies and things that are important to our community when it comes to many things, including public policy and stuff like that. And it's just my opinion that I would like to share with you if I could. Um, in many cases, we need to remember people who came here a long time ago and brought food. The Iron Curtain, which was called Iron Curtain, the Soviet Union, and came here to be free and active and useful members of the society. 
um, talking about the Russian speaking population that came here way before I was even born. And they came here, started living in the place that is now West Hollywood. Yeah, even before the city was incorporated. Um, they played a huge major role and became a huge force in the movement to create and build the city of West Hollywood. Russian speaking community brought diverse and cultural background um, and knowledge in classical music and medical background and great food and amazing art and many of the other amazing things like our arts and culture festival and May Sky Classical Night that I try to put together every year, despite a very tiny budget and me begging world-class musicians to perform for all of us in the city and the city council chambers, I'm sorry. Um, we're trying to deeply enrich um, the development of the cultural and social life of all as Hollywood residents. And even though we had a census mistakenly shows that the Russian speaking community number is lower, it was incorrectly posed the question that made it look like uh, the numbers are lower. Because if you ask any young and um, established professional that is assimilated into American culture, what is your language? What is the language that you're using in your everyday life? Of course, the question would be English. They didn't ask the correct question during the census, and it was a big part of the census, and it kind of erased part of the Russian-speaking community because people didn't answer my main languages that I use in my everyday life. They didn't answer that my language was a question. They answered English, and based on that question, they counted Russian people which is actually many, many nationalities inside the Russian speaking community. It's Jewish people, it's people from Ukraine, Belarus, Tatarstan, Kazakhstan, and many other from the Soviet Republic that are united, international communities united by speaking one language. So uh, all of that is actually kind of um, showed as lower numbers, but in reality, we have a lot of all kinds of different families uh, being built and created and children being born and people still speaking Russian and bringing Russian culture uh, and Jewish culture and Ukrainian culture and all kinds of interesting cultures in this melting pot that we call our home in West Hollywood. And this is why um, some time ago, um, to connect the, all the generations from decades ago, all the immigrants from decades ago, we started all of that process. And the current generations that are younger and might not know the history of the immigration. Re Russian speaking advisory board came up with the idea of the virtual museum of the Russian speaking community that would have uh, the people who had to choose between the freedom and never coming back to where they grew up and coming here and kind of like cutting through this iron burden to come here and the freedom to be themselves. Gay people, straight people, white people, trans people, everybody who came here to build their new lives. And the Russian speaking community is not the exception because we have a lot of members who uh, cross pollinate with other communities that also build West Hollywood, like LGBT community and Russian community. Um, if we do a Venn diagram, we have uh, a cross between two communities. So it's it's important to kind of for us to also uh, have this. That's why we uh, propose this virtual museum. And another thing that I think is important because. Um, um, sorry, sorry, Eugene, we do have a few more people who are interested in giving comments. So um, I just want to make sure everyone gets enough time. It. I will be very short. Another thing you. that I think very shortly that is important that within uh, the current climate, which is completely understandable within one crazy person hijacking your whole or previous country, there is a lot of Russian hate going on. 
for the people who live in West Hollywood, in Los Angeles, and in the United States in general. So that is something that we might think about because when COVID started, there was a lot of Asian pain, which was terrible. Right now, when this person, when this human person, lately, is doing what he's doing, uh, is uh, making our lives tough because we get a lot of hate messages on social media. We get a lot of hate messages just because we speak the lang same language. So I think it would be important to kind of acknowledge the fact that we get a lot of heat just because we technically speak the same language as the people in Korea. Thank you so much for um for I appreciate your time. Thank you, Eugene. Uh let's see. Victor, I see you, so I will um allow you to um speak. You should have that capability now, Victor. I seem to be, good evening, everyone. I seem to be having a little bit of technical difficulties. My internet connection seems to be unstable, but um, I can tell you that uh, wearing the hat of a board member of the West Hollywood Preservation Alliance, we're happy to see that this study is being undertaken. And um, the angle that we were, in, I mean, we're interested in all aspects of, of, of this study. And I have to say that as I came on, I think I just saw two slides. And so is that the extent of the presentation to the community of what this study is all about? Because I, I was expecting a little bit more context. Are we going to see any more slides? Can you hear me? Yes. Um, so those are the only slides for this evening. Um, Hello. Can you can hear you, us, Victor? Can you hear us? Oh. Oh, I see. Well, this has been quite very uninformative, Miss Paluchek and Miss Horak and Miss Duckworth. What are we talking about here? I, 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 you encouraged me, Miss Duckworth, to bring people in to learn about this, and I'm getting calls that they're having technical difficulties. This format is very unforgiving, given that we've had three years of getting used to this kind of thing. Are there hundreds of people lined up to speak, Miss Duckworth? I'm really very, very upset. And if others here are wanting to speak, it, it just seems very confusing. So I don't know where to begin since you've given us so little information. Please share. I, I understand the, the frustration, Victor. I'm really sorry about the technical difficulties. I don't see anything on on my end but um if there is someone who was not able to join um i've been checking my emails in the chat so um so far i do have a few folks who've signed up to speak so we do want to make sure everyone who's interested in providing feedback and giving comments is able to do so um in regards to the the slides um I'm not sure if you noticed, but we we're still in the or the architectural okay. resources group is still in the um, research phase of the project. So there isn't much to um, show the community in regards to 
what they've been compiling as of yet. Um, but we did want to at least provide um, a brief overview of what they plan on, some of the things that they plan on um, researching and investigating, um, go over some of the, the goals and objectives of the project and make sure that West Hollywood residents and community members know that um, there will be a space for them to provide feedback on um, the contents of the study um, and inform them that the findings of the study will be used to um, inform the city on next steps in regards to racial and social equity initiatives in the city. So I understand your frustration um, and I get uh -huh. that, but we, but we did want to provide a space for, for community um, to give feedback before things were finalized while the, the consultant team is compiling information, um, whether that means that people are able to contact us um, and share experiences that may be relevant to the study. So hopefully that answers some of your questions. Um, okay. Let me know. Well, <laughs> okay, well then, uh, offline we can talk because I desperately tried to search for the staff report that was prepared initially for this study. I believe it was a year or so ago. It had some fascinating details about the redlining of the neighborhood that encompasses historic Palm Avenue and Betty Way. Those happen to be some of our few remaining single family residential streets in the city, as well as Greenacre. So wearing my hat as a West Hollywood Preservation Alliance board member, we were very interested in making sure that as you go and look at this study, that the whole issue about the redlining and supposed subversives living in the Betty Way Palm Avenue neighborhood be really, really closely examined. What kind of subversives were we talking about? I remember jotting that note down from this staff report that I haven't been able to locate online, Jasmine. Maybe later you can provide me with that link. I did try to search that so that I could make some cogent comments. And then moving to the east side and Greenacre Avenue, the stories may be apocryphal, but in terms of racial and ethnic equality and demographics and that, there is some word that they may have been one of the last Oh, Japanese nursery streets on the east side. So following, so that I looking into as uh, Ms. Horak and her staff go ahead with this project and working, uh, uh, going up, um, just following up with uh, Mr. Maisky's comments, and I'm happy he mentioned the Russian speaking community, the Ukrainian speaking community. I trust that we will have the Spanish speaking community on asking questions tonight. And um, I would suggest that we look at all these different ethnic groups, and I'm sure Ms. Horak and ARG will look back at census reports to see what kind of other languages than Russian were maybe being spoken in this entire West Hollywood, even before we were an incorporated city, because our history as a city just goes back about, you know, what, 40 years or so. So besides Russian and Ukrainian, there are other languages that and maybe subgroups that we would want to look at. The Yiddish uh, speaking folks, the Spanish speaking folks, uh, people from African countries. I mean, th this is all a, a chance to really delve into the history of our city, the, uh, you know what, the ethnography of our city. And so I just offer those up because I know that from the preservation angle, we feel that Betty Way, a red line district with subversivists, is potentially merit study. Greenacre is as well as all the you know other streets in and areas of our city and so i just share that and um hope that you can look at all these different uh aspects and we had been hoping uh there is an ancillary thing going on there is this new heinous law that was passed by the state called sb9 which is 
destroying a single family residential neighborhoods, potentially like Betty Way and Greenacre. And we had hoped that the city would not have implemented the ordinance to implement the SB9 hateful new legislature, which is coming on these footsteps of saying it's about affordable housing, but it doesn't really assure affordable housing. It assures the destruction of single family neighborhoods. So we want to be sure that in this study, we closely examine the last two single family residential streets in this city, Betty Way, which may have been a den of subversives, as I read in some staff report, oh, and Palm Avenue, which is ripe for development, and Green Acre, which may have been the last bastion of, oh my God, I forgot to add, Asian American people like the Jap Angeles area before they were sent to concentration camps. So thank you so much for letting me speak at this length. And I look forward to hearing from the Spanish speaking community and all of the other ethnic groups that I'm sure are on this call tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you, Victor. Um, next, we will let uh, John let me know if I'm mispronouncing your last name, Weispert. Um, I will allow you to speak. And I'll just chime in while we're waiting for John to, to get on um, screen, just that our presentation was pretty brief and we started right at 6.30. So it might make sense before the evening's over for us to splash the schedule back up on the screen, just so that those of you who joined a little late and didn't see the presentation get a sense of where we are. Um, in the process. We're really um, right now information gathering and, and really excited to hear your comments um, and looking forward to keeping you posted as we keep going on the on the process. But maybe the schedule will be helpful sort of before we wrap up. Thanks, Katie. Hi. Yeah, you pronounce it's wise part. I think you pronounced it correctly. I'll be extremely brief. I'm a resident of Green Acre since 1996. And just to echo what Victor had said, um, even going, I think I found documents too where Green Acre was like a Covenant Street and there were rules about who could live on here, who could actually stay overnight and things like that. And as he said, it's the last single family housing and with SB9 and making making all the residences able to have four units on them, I think would really destroy the character of the neighborhood and the city. Um, it's a big city and it's single family housing, I think is under 1%, I'm not sure, but. Just I would like just to make sure that Green Acre is included in the preservation study and maybe architecturally it's not the greatest looking thing when you think of historic historic ah, historic houses, but historically it's you know single family track housing built like near the near the uh, chaplain studios just around the corner, so I would just. Throw my two cents and be very brief and let you get on with your evening, so thank you very much. Thanks John. Thank you. Um, and I will say um, thank you, John and Victor, for your comments because I am taking notes and this is exactly what we're looking for. Um, I will say that um, although they are named similarly, similarly, excuse me, um, this document is going to be different than a typical historic context statement. We're not necessarily looking at um, and calling out the built environment. We will certainly be looking at the development of West Hollywood and including an overview of its history. Um, but the purposes of this document are a little bit different just to sort of let everyone know, um, you know, sort of the goals and the, the intent of the document. Thank you, Alicia. Um, so next we'll have Jonathan Wilson and then Michael Wolfgulevich. I apologize that I'm in a uh, in a unique environment, mental health. <laughs> um, but I do want to say that um, I am the chair of the Social Justice Task Force, and um, I'm representing myself right now as a resident and a business owner in the city of West Hollywood. One um, question that I have for you is really more around, um, really more around the black within BIPOC. 
And I want to understand how historically um, venues that have had black leadership have had discrimination versus those that have not had black leadership. And by black leadership, I mean black managers and above within um, within the venues. So whether it's a concert venue, a bar, a restaurant, I would love to understand how that has fared over time. Um, my hypothesis is that there's not many. And my other part of that is because there are not many at the senior levels, black people experience a lot more discrimination. That's my hypothesis. And I'd like to understand if that's something that the committee can kind of dive into. Yes, that's absolutely something that we can be, we can look at. Um, we have not yet come across research that sort of indicates either way, um, but it's definitely a, a research question that we can pursue. Absolutely. Thank you. That's it. Of course. All right. And that was me as a resident and business owner, not social justice task force, because I definitely do believe that everybody within the BIPOC community needs a voice. So with that said, all right, thank you, Jasmine, for letting me ask that question. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, Michael, I will come to you next. Oh, sorry, Jasmine, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, sorry about that. And you can still hear me, correct? Correct. Okay, very good. So, as we are now just past 22 and a half years into this 21st century, and as one still cannot turn back time, Let's look at three recent day observations which may tell anyone everything they do not want to acknowledge about the supposed city of equality and inclusion, the city that is West Hollywood. First, despite the ongoing mantra of West Hollywood involving select words, live, work, play, still the real time and official city of West Hollywood website displays under the heading community, a subsection entitled Russian speaking community. I bring this up because despite many who work either in the broad services and hospitality sectors or the booming construction sector and are not necessarily English speaking as preference, there is no subsection on the city's website under community entitled Spanish speaking community, which obviously would address and acknowledge the diverse Latin communities. And there is definitely no Latin Heritage Month. The next two points come courtesy of WeHoville. You know, that local social media blog that acts for many as a town square sounding board. And I should note, the first point comes under the reign of Hank Scott, whereas the last second point is not only even one year old, thus under the reign of Mr. Larry Block. So first and foremost, February 18th, 2015, WeHo considers, recommends, WeHo Council recommends MTA not extend negotiation contract with Charles Cohen. On one of the um, replies, there is a person by the name of Jonas who says, I want assurances that his project won't dilute the gay population and businesses. The reason why I bring this quote up is if you substitute that word gay and replace it with the word white, whereas it would read, I want assurances that his project won't dilute the white population and white businesses automatically, there is a tinge of racism involved protecting certain populations like gay populations and gay businesses is no different than protecting white businesses and white populations. Now, even troubling is the second point. And again, this comes 10 months ago. 
October 26, 2021. Subject matter is the new residential building springs from site of former, former car wash. We're talking about the Madison car wash, just a stone's throw from where I live along Santa Monica Boulevard. And again, this is a comment from somebody who probably lives in West Hollywood. The comment is three words. The last two words is up, UP, America. Unfortunately, the first word does not begin with an F. It begins with an N, as in Nancy. It is one of the most racial things that I have seen within West Hollywood. And again, mind you, this is when Mayor Lindsay Horvath, well, this is when Councilperson Lindsay Horvath was mayor. Why this comment first and foremost was allowed 10 months ago and has and then has been allowed to stay up for the past 10 months is, is unconceivable. And I really would like to understand why this allowance has been given. And Jasmine, I will send you after this meeting um, the exact thing that I'm talking about because I am not going to say it. Um, but um, in interest of time, I just want to state one thing. Having tried to participate this past Monday at the Coalition of Economic Survival, the first person that you've had from the public, Eugene Maskey, discriminated against me as not only a West Hollywood resident, but somebody of senior age and who is disabled. That man continued to interrupt me so much so that I could not even get my first of many questions out. So, you know, I know what Eugene's aim is, which is all about a certain population that came into this country as, as part of nuclear treaties back in the day. But this is a person who showed disdain and insensitivity for a West Hollywood resident, regardless of their age and their physical capability. So thank you for hearing me out. And, and again, Jasmine, um, expect to receive an email regarding this comment from 10 months ago that again, still is on Weehaville. It's, it's quite, even though it's just three words, it's quite deplorable. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. The next person that I have um, is Andrea. Andrea, feel free to um, unmute and turn on your camera if you'd like. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I think I accidentally made myself a panelist, sorry. Oh no, <laughs> I, so something. in the webinar feature, in order to allow folks to um, turn on their cameras, uh, we have to add them as a panelist. But once you're done speaking, we um, transition you back <laughs> to an attendee. So that okay, was me. Got it, thanks. Thanks. I don't want to be, I'm not going to turn my camera on. I, you know, I just wanted to comment. I live on Betty Way. I'm super excited that you guys are doing this assessment. Um, I'm very curious to see what the outcomes of it, of it are, especially for uh, Betty Way and Greenacre. I know that these streets have been coming up a lot because of the SB9. Um, it will be very interesting to understand how the city takes the information collected from this report and actually applies it to the physical state um, and the safety of basically Pre preserving historical culture for the city of West Hollywood. So I just want to say thanks so much for your efforts. We appreciate it and can't wait to see the whole report. Thanks. Thank you. So I don't see um, anyone else raising their hands. Um, spoke too soon. Steve, I am allowing you to unmute and turn your camera on if you're interested while you speak.
Am I unmuted now? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, yeah, just to follow up on, on Jonathan's uh, question, uh, there was a black owned business, a black owned nightclub called the Speakeasy on Westbourne North of um, Santa Monica Boulevard. It was a jazz club that operated for years and years uh, and eventually went out of business. Uh, you guys may want to look into how long it was the, uh, a, a black owned uh, jazz club. The fact that it's called the speakeasy, it may very well have been a speakeasy back in the twenties because uh, there's a number of places like Sloan's, uh, which is at Huntley and Melrose or was at Huntley and Melrose uh, that started operating in 1919. So it wouldn't be a huge shock um, that there was a, a, uh, a speakeasy there, and it would be certainly interesting to find out if it was black owned. Uh, that would certainly be in a unique situation. Um, the other is I did have a chance to look at a, a grant deed, a really old grant deed from Greenacre. And um, it was very specific about excluding uh, a number of people, but particularly, particularly Asians, and it particularly called out Filipinos, which is uh, kind of ironic since I live on Poinsettia and I guess the best revenge is as being a, my grandfather's Filipino. So I guess the best revenge is <laughs> owning a house in West Hollywood. Uh, but anyway, um, the other thing there was, you know, about the Russian community, I think you may want to talk to maybe Sav Yaroslavsky, the former um, supervisor, because he was very involved with Save the Soviet Jewry, which might put some context. And um, Sai Frumkin was another. Uh, because that would put some time period. There were a lot of Soviet Jews that came over to West Hollywood uh, thanks to the efforts of Zev and uh, our former Congressman Henry Waxman. And they were put over into county housing. Uh, there uh, you know, was an unintended consequence, of course, of that that meant that those buildings became basically all white European uh, and there wasn't a whole lot of people of color living in those buildings. And, uh, you know, West Hollywood was uh, also had a little bit of that in that we've, I believe we still have some Russian only speaking buildings, which I think is probably a little bit of a dated way of handling things today. Um, but anyway, we have a lot of history and you got a lot of work to do. So thanks a lot. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Steve. So I don't see anyone else raising their hands, but um, if there are, are attendees, um, feel free if you have any comments or um, questions. We may not be able to answer everything this evening, but um, we will work with the architectural resources group um, to make sure we incorporate all of the feedback that we, we get here tonight. Um, and Jasmine, you didn't get to the slide, but I will mention um, that we have created, um, for everyone listening, we have created a public comment form that um, you can use to submit comments, questions, and things like that. And the city will be hosting that soon on their website. And maybe um, let's go back to the previous slide that showed um, the timeline for folks um, either missed it at the beginning or are interested in um, next steps. Yes, yeah, so if you um, were not here earlier, um, we are currently in the research and outreach portion of the project. Um, we are just beginning to um, kind of put pen to paper so to speak, but we're still in the information gathering phase very much. Um, and we're asking that um, any comments submitted be submitted by the beginning of October. So we have a chance to incorporate them into the study as we complete it and uh, into, the, into the winter. Thanks, Alicia. So in just a Quick reminder as well. Um, oh, let me. I saw that Kathy had her hand up. And then, 
Jasmine, real quick, sorry. Um, you could also, um, if you like, share the last um, slide of our presentation because I had included um, your contact information if you want to put there. Great, okay. Kathy, I see your hand is down now, but I did um, allow you to join and unmute if you had a question. If not, no pressure, it's okay. Yes, hi, Kathy Blavis. Um, I'm, I'm just wondering, I, I don't recall in past uh, context statements uh, having this much involvement in terms of um, at least my awareness of um, to the extent at which the city is now putting this out uh, to the community. And I'm, I guess my question is, uh, I'm not questioning that it's happening. I'm just wondering, has this, been, has this always been included in, to this extent in other context uh, statements and other uh, surveys? Thank you for taking my question. Thanks, Kathy. Um, I think if I understand you correctly, um, Alicia kind of touched on the difference between this particular study and um, other studies that people may be familiar with that are um, that have an emphasis on uh, planning and architecture in a certain neighborhood or area. Um, whereas this is the city of West Hollywood's first uh, attempt at a historical context study, which is different. Um, so we'll essentially be studying the, the history of um, what we now recognize as the city of West Hollywood. So um, that may explain why the approach is a little bit different. We are um, in a lot of ways relying heavily on community input um, and kind of helping um, the architectural resources group tell the story of West Hollywood. So hopefully that, that answers your question. So I do, um, there were a few questions um, entered in the Q&A and I believe I answered most of them. Uh, there is uh, one last question that may be beneficial for everyone to hear. So I'll just read that one aloud. Um, what is the city trying to ascertain from this study and will there be a plan to carry out uh, when it is completed? Um, so yes, uh, there is a plan. Uh, the goal is for, again, the city to understand um, the history of the land of, of the city of West Hollywood, um, and the findings of the study will help um, inform the city on next steps in terms of uh, racial equity and uh, social equity initiatives in West Hollywood. And we will be, uh, if folks are interested, uh, emailing the public comment form that Alicia mentioned previously to uh, all of the participants here tonight. Um, and that form will also be um, accessible. Uh, so if you are interested in providing feedback, if you weren't able to participate tonight, uh, that is another avenue that you can share your thoughts and comments with the consultants. And I will share that last screen or last slide. So um, this is my contact information. Again, if you're interested in uh, providing feedback, I can email this form. Um, and if you would like to review the staff reports and the corresponding attachments, uh, I'm more than happy to forward that information to you as well. So I think that's that's it on my end. Um, I really wanna thank everyone for attending the listening session and providing the feedback uh, that you did. And uh, big thanks to Alicia and Katie, as well as Andrew from the Architectural Resources Group 
Um, if there are any questions, please feel free to uh, contact me via email. And thank you all. Jasmine, I see that Victor has his hand up again. You may want to make one final brief comment. Oh, sorry about that. I didn't see you, Victor. You should be. Oh, oh, there he is. For some reason, he went away. Okay, Victor, you should have that capability now. Again. Okay, now I see you. <laughs> I'm so sorry for this, uh, these shenanigans with this uh, internet here. I don't know what's going on, but thank you for this beginning process and thank you for listening to our uh, input i'm sure you'll hear more from folks as they go on and once david wilson after labor day in terms of encouraging more you know sharing and for people like us who do take the time to uh come to meetings like this maybe a link to the staff report jasmine would have been helpful in the announcement of this uh, of this um, Zoom meeting. I know that the announcement was very kind of dense with a lot of information about how to participate and how to Zoom in, but I guess one more link that would have included the staff report that the city council considered, and I believe it was council member Shine and Horvath who initiated this item, it would be helpful because even for me, someone who knows how to search through the labyrinth of stuff, I was not able to find that report as I was preparing for this meeting tonight. So I apologize if I became somewhat passionate, but as Ms. Horak and others know, we are passionate about these issues as they affect our city. And as we study, as we study, Study this and we do a survey and a context study like this, a somewhat different way of looking at it. I actually learned something today, but I would have also benefited greatly from being able to prepare better actual resource documents like the Mar a Lago documents that were found. If those kinds of documents could have been included. Um, in the announcement to the public because then others could have read about it and it, it would have probably facilitated and answered uh, some questions or may have even uh, made folks ask even you know more questions. But uh, that staff report is what I remembered from my memory is talking about Betty Way neighborhood is being redlined with lots of subversives and Green Acre being uh, you know, with the Asian American background. So I brought up all those groups. So thank you for listening to me and have a good week. Thank you, Victor. Um, and I'll make sure in my email out to all of the um, attendees, I'll include the links to the staff reports as well as the public comment form. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jasmine. With that, again, I'd like to thank everyone for attending thank the Architectural Resources Group um, and wish everyone uh, a good night. Thank you thank so, much. You so much.